this is the first lecture of the set of uh, 20 lectures on calculus of variations. This uh, lecture, I will start with the introduction of calculus of variation. Here in this, I will be following uh, the reference book. the books. This is calculus of variation. With applications, on calculus of variations, we will be covering uh, many aspects uh, of uh, calculus of variations how the study of calculus of variation started and what are the uh, applications of uh, the theory developed for this, that is what we will be discussing in this. So, in th uh, this first uh, lecture, we will give some introductions of problems arising in calculus of variations. The study of calculus of variations started in 1696 by John Bernoulli. He proposed a problem which is known as Brachistochrone problem. In this problem, what he proposed to find path along which a particle uh, slides under gravity, then it takes the least time. So, mathematically this problem can be stated like this, that in a vertical plane, you have two points A and B, not at the same level, at different levels and then if you join this by a smooth curve like this and a particle slides from A to B under uh, influence of gravity, then certainly the time taken uh, by this particle from uh, coming from A to B is function of this y, uh, where y is this curve as a function of x. So, this is the x axis and this is y axis and this y is a function of x, smooth function of x. So, that at each point the tangent is defined. And so, here this time taken by uh, the particle under the influence of gravity in sliding from A to the point B is denoted by T y and this will be given by uh, here, let us say this is the point x 1 and this is the point x 2 here. So, this point is x 1 y 1 and this point is x 2 y 2. Then here this is actually can be seen, this is like uh, integral from x 1 to x 2 uh, d s upon the velocity, that is what will d s is the element arc length along this curve. The integral is from x 1 to x 2 square root of 1 plus y prime square upon this is the uh, dis, uh, d s distance upon the velocity which is a function of y and this uh, functional is what is called the uh, time taken by the particle sliding from A to B under the influence of gravity. Here this uh, time uh, here will be actually given by this integral x 1 to x 2 square root of 1 plus y prime means d y by d x upon the velocity. Here, this is actually can be seen, this is like uh, integral from x 1 to x 2 uh, d s upon the velocity, that is what will d s is the element arc length along this curve. So, that d s uh, the uh, time taken from uh, this point to this point. So, in this element area d s upon the velocity, that will be the time taken 
by this particle coming from this point to this point. Now, here, so if uh, this total time taken by this particle from A to B will be given by the integral x 1 to x 2 uh, integral of d s upon v. So, d s is actually square root of 1 plus y prime square and uh, the velocity v will be taken as a function of y. So, that is the time taken by the uh, particle from uh, slide, uh, sliding from point A to B. Now, this is what is called the problem of Rochester Crone and we are uh, asked to find a curve along which this takes the least time. So, that is what is called the problem of quickest descent, quickest descent descent. So, we have to find, find y such that time taken in sliding, time taken by the particle, the particle in sliding under gravity from A to B is least. So, this is the problem of Rochester Crone. Now, this problem was proposed by the uh, famous mathematician John Bernoulli and it was in the same year 1696 was solved by several mathematicians like uh, Newton, Leibniz, Weierstrass and uh, uh, John Bernoulli himself and some, some other uh, mathematicians of uh, that time. So, that the problem of calculus of variation started with that. Now, there are many other problems which can be posed as uh, the problem of calculus of variations. Like you have in a plane, suppose you have a two points A and B and then the length of the curve, this is the function y of x. We know that the length of this curve is given by the integral x 1 to x 2 square root of 1 plus y prime square d x, which is again actually given like x 1 to x 2 d s. So, again here d s is the uh, element area, uh, element length in terms of arc length s. So, uh, integration of uh, this d s element length from x 1 to x 2 here again this is point x 1 and this point is x 2. So, this is x 1 y 1 and x 2 y 2. So, this is what uh, this integral x 1 to x 2 square root of 1 plus y prime square d x, uh, which is nothing but the integral of uh, d s element uh, length x 1 to x 2. So, this gives the length of the curve y. So, this is a function of y, if we change y, then its length will change. Now, the problem of calculus of variation in relation to this is to find a, uh, the curve such that the length is least. So, the, we know the answer is that the, the straight line joining these two point will be having. So, a straight line joining a and b has least length, but how we prove it mathematically? Again, it is a problem of calculus of variation and next problem can be thought as uh, supposing you have this surface area double integral over d, then you have surface area d s now, which is bounded by. Uh, so, this surface area over uh, uh, d. So, this what is the smallest 
surface area where uh, I mean the curve is given to you and then here let us say this is S surface bounded by this curve and now uh, this length is length of the curve is fixed. Now, we want to find what is that surface which will have the least surface area. We know that it will be that uh, flat area if it is a uh, plane curve. So, this is also a problem of uh, calculus of variations. Now, so with this here the other problem of surface of area for a given surface z x y it can be written as double integral d square root of 1 plus z x square plus z y square d x d y. So, here we have to choose that surface as uh, surface z x y such that this uh, has least surface area. So, this is also a problem of calculus of variations. Now, here this is certainly a generalization of a, a minimization or maximization of a curve, where you want minimization maximization of points at which the uh, fu function has minimum or maximum. For example, here if you consider this curve. So, let us say this is the point A and this is the point B here. So, this f, f is defined from A to B into x in A to B into R and uh, this function has uh, it is at, at least continuous. and we may like to have more smoothness property on this function like differentiability at all points in the uh, interval a b. Here we can see that this at this point f a is ma maximum of f x between a to b. So, f a is the maximum here and f b Similarly, f b is minimum of f x between. So, th this is a global maximum, f a is global maximum and f b is uh, global minimum. Then there are other points like this, let us say this is point x 1 and this is point x 2, this is point x 3. So, here in this f of x 1, similarly f of x 2 and f of x 3. Now, these are the points of local minimum or maximum. So, for example, f this is local minimum, because in the neighborhood of this here uh, this has the least value. Similarly, in the neighborhood of x 2 here this has the maximum value. So, this is local maximum. Similarly, F 3 is also local minimum, but we have this F A as global maximum and F B is global minimum. So, at these points here we can see that the uh, if the function is smooth if it does not have cor corners like this, li like this, if it is a smooth function like this, where the derivative exists, then we can see that here tangent becomes horizontal. Similarly, the tangent becomes here horizontal. That means derivative is zero. F prime at this point x1 is zero. F prime at x2 is zero. So f prime at x1 equal to zero. Similarly, f prime at x2 is 0 and f prime at x 3 is also 0. So, these are actually uh, if the function has continuous uh, derivative at all points in the interval a to b, then we can see that at these local minimum or local maximum, we have the derivative of these functions becoming 0. So, here given a functional like this, so we have a functional 
for example, here L of y, where L is uh, a function from the function space. So, we call it the admissible function class uh, from here interval a to b. So, this into r, where a is the admissible class a is called the admissible class of functions. So, L y is actually called functional. So, L y L is uh, for each y here. So, each y in a b a a to b we have associated L y which is a function in which is a number r. So, given a function in this admissible class this L uh, which is called functional, which is a function of function in loosely speaking. So, here given any, so here the argument of L is a function actually, whereas in the previous case here this f was uh, from number to number. Here in this case L is a uh, from, uh, for, from a given function to a number. So, it associates a function to a uh, number. So, such a thing is called functional. So, L is called functional. For example, this length of y given by this x 1 to x 2 square root 1 plus y prime square d x. This gives you uh, the length of y. So, L for a given function continuously differentiable from the set or the from the function space we call it c 1 x 1 to x 2 from the space c 1 to c 2. c 1 means continuously differentiable uh, uh, the set of the space of all continuously differentiable function from uh, the interval x 1 to x 2 into r. So, this is the space of all continuously differentiable function. It is a uh, usually we will consider c k, k being integer non negative integer c k a to b, which will denote the space of all continuous functions whose uh, uh, kth derivative uh, will be continuous. So, for k equal to 1, we will call it c 1 x 1 to x 2 and the values are real numbers. So, we are considering only the real valued functions here and so an element here will be called an admissible function here. So, this is the admissible class like uh, a a comma b. So, here this a is x 1, b is x 2 and this a here is actually c 1. So, that is the class of uh, that is the admissible class of functions for this functional uh, to L to be defined here. So, here in this case for any given function y from uh, this space L uh, assigns a number L y. So, that is what is the uh, actually functional which assigns to each function uh, y in this space admissible uh, space of functions here for this functional to be defined. If we have higher derivatives appearing here, then we will take higher order uh, function spaces here. So, this for given y uh, the length of y will be uh, given by this integral here. 
So, if we change uh, for example, here you have this x 1, x 2 here. So, this is the point A x 1 y 1 and this is the point B x 2 y 2 and this is the curve y x here which joins uh, these two points A and B. So, this functional will uh, give the length of this y. If we change this, let us say this is y 1, if we consider the another function y 2 here. So, then uh, we will L of y 1 will be given by integral x 1 to x 2 square root 1 plus y 1 prime square x d x. Similarly, L of y 2 will be integral x 1 to x 2 square root 1 plus y 2 prime x square d x like that. So, we change this y, this l will be changed. Now, we want to find what is that y for which we get the least number, which will be the least length, the length of the curve for joining these two points A to B such that its length is the least one. We know the answer that it has to be a straight line joining these two points, but how do we prove that? So, that will be a problem of calculus of variations. So, now uh, before going into the calculus of variations, we need to develop certain tools for that. Similarly, we will be having this higher order. So, here the functional will be of this uh, type like the integral i going from x 1 to x 2, certain function x, uh, certain function f which is function of uh, these variables x is an independent variable, y as a function of x and then d y by d x that is y prime x d x. Now, again here this f is function of three variables x, y and y prime. So, here uh, and these uh, functions like these arguments of course, x is an independent variable which is varying. So, x is lying between x 1 to x 2 and y is a function from x 1 to x 2 into r such that y prime and uh, y being c 1 x 1 to x 2 like this. So, that y prime will also be function from x 1 to x 2 and it will be continuous. So, that y prime is continuous here and this f is continuous of all its arguments So, there are three arguments for this function x, y and y prime and here this f is a continuous function of this variable, this variable and this and y in turn is continuous function uh, between uh, x 1 to x 2 and y prime is also a continuous function. So, overall this uh, integrand becomes a continuous function uh, from x 1 to x 2 and then by uh, this uh, Riemann hypothesis we know that this integral i exists as a Riemann integral. So, here the problem of calculus of variation is then to find uh, a y a function y. So, is that it is derivative is also continuous and, and this value is uh, minimum or maximum. So, we call such a thing as optimum value, optimal value and y we call as optimal curve for or extremal, y is called extremal and this integral i will be optimal. So, these are the terms we use that what is that extremal for which i is actually having the value extremal value. So, such uh, functions y which are from the admissible class, here admissible class is c 1 class of functions from x 1 to x 2 into r. 
So, the, here the generalization of this could be like i x 1 to x 2 and f has more variables now like x y 1 x y 2 x and similarly this y n x and then their derivatives y 1 prime x y 2 prime x and so on up to y n prime x d x. So, this is the generalization of this. So, this can be treated as a particular case of the more general problem, where again you have these y 1, y 2, y n, they are uh, from the admissible class, uh, like you we are considering here derivatives. So, the uh, con uh, derivatives should be continuous here in order this integral to exist as a Riemann integral. So, here f will be actually a continuous function of all these arguments and these uh, depend this uh, x is an independent variable here and y 1, y 2, y n they are dependent variables and these derivatives are also appearing here. So, again the problem of calculus of variation is to find uh, these functions y 1, y 2, y n and such that uh, this in, uh, integral has uh, either minimum value or maximum value depending upon the problem posed here. And in addition to this like we have uh, in the this case we have the curve joining these two points A and B. So, here the condition is that uh, it should pass through x 1 y 1 and x 2 y 2. So, that means uh, here y 1 uh, at x 1 should be this y 1 here or y at so, y at so if y joins this, so y so this y at x 1 should be y 1. Similarly, y at x 2 should be y 2. So, that this curve passes through those given points. So, and these points are fixed here. Similarly, here this y 1 x 1 must be some given value like. Uh, so, again you have several curves y 1, y 2, y n and uh, they should pass through the, these given points a and b. So, this y 1 x 1 there will be conditions on this like you have y 1 y 1 similarly y 1 x 2 will be y 2 and so this should be for all those y 2 x 1 will be rather y 1 uh, 1 y 1 0 you can put here y 1 1 y 2 at x 2 is y 2 1 and so on. You have y n x 1 as y n 1 and y n x 2 is y n 2 here. So, these are the additional conditions to be satisfied, so that uh, the curve pass through those given points here. So, further generalization could be uh, here you consider higher order derivatives. So, i again it will be. So, in the previous case this i is a function of i is a function of y 1, y 2 and y n. And here in this case let us say i is a or uh, special case like uh, you have i as y only, but then you have higher order derivatives appearing x 1 to x 2 f of x y y prime y double prime and up to y nth derivative is appearing there. So, like this. So, 
again here the curve y is expected to it is uh, passing through those given points a and b here. So, this is y x and it has uh, more smoothness now. So, admissible class has to be uh, c n x 1 to x 2. So, y has to be actually uh, in this space of functions uh, c n. So, up to nth order derivative should exist and it should be a continuous function from x 1 to x 2. So, again here you will have certain additional conditions like y at x 1 is y 1 and y at x 2 equal to y 2 like 0, 0 and then y prime at x 1 is something y 1, 1, y prime at x 2 is y 1, 2 and so on. There will be up to y n minus 1 at x 1, y n minus 1, 1 and y n minus 1 at x 2, y n minus 1, 2. So, these are additional conditions given. So, that this y has to satisfy all these conditions and it has to optimize this integral depending upon whether to minimize or to maximize. Then further generalization could be, could be like i y here you have more independent variables. So, for example, you have let us say 2. So, then you will have double integral and f is function of let us say x 1, x 2 and then some function z of x 1, x 2 and then del z by del x 1, x 1, x 2 and del z by del x 2, x 1, x 2 and d x here you have two dimensional situation here. This is x 1, x 2 and there is some domain d here and on this, this z is the surface given like this. So, this is the surface z equal to z x y. So, for given any point here, this is the value z x y. So, x y here, this is z x y and z x y. This point is x y and z x y. Let us say this is z here like this. So, here this function f is a smooth function here of all these arguments and this z x y is denoting this surface here. So, in order uh, here again the problem of sorry this should be z here. So, he, this integral i is a function of z if you change this surface this value is going to change and we need to find that z such that uh, it actually the boundary is fixed here. So, along this this z will be satisfying certain boundary condition that uh, z has the fixed boundary here and that z is actually optimizing this functional. So, that is the condition of that is the problem of uh, optimization which we will be considering here. So, we will be considering these many such cases where we will have uh, one of these situations here. Now, we will consider certain L preliminaries of uh, the concepts which will be required subsequently. So, we start with preliminaries. So, here we had been considering continuity of a function. So, what do you mean by that? A function f from this x 1 to x 2 into r is called continuous
if continuous at x equal to x 0, if this limit x tending to x 0 of f x exists and is equal to f of x 0. For example, here if you consider this function So, here this is x 1, this is x 2 and then there is some point here x 0 here. So, here you, you can see that let us say uh, if we consider this is a straight line except at that this point x 0 uh, function is not uh, defined here. So, it cannot be continuous because it has to be uh, defined at that point. So, let us say at this the function is here. So, at, a expo at all these points function is like this and here all these points on the right the function is like this up to x 2, but at this point x 0 this value is here. So, this is uh, although the limit extending to x 0 exists and uh, here that will not be equal to the value of the function which is actually this. So, this is a discontinuous function. Again, the other example is suppose it, the function is 1 here and this point onwards 2 here. So, here up to 0 to 1, the value is so f x equal to 1, 0 less than x less than 1 and it is 2 for 1 less than equal to x and let us say up to 2, 1 to 2. So, this function is discontinuous at this point. Here the left limit exists, right limit exists but uh, the that is not equal to the value of the function here. So, the left limit here is 1 at this point. So, f f x limit x tending to x 0 minus that is what. So, this limit x tending to 1 minus means if you approach this point uh, 1 from the uh, left side. So, this will be actually equal to uh, 1 and if you take limit x tending to 1 plus that means, you approach from this side. So, of f x that we know that we are approaching from this uh, uh, approaching to this point from this side like this. So, it will go to 2. So, these two are not equal and therefore, this limit does not exist and therefore, the function is discontinuous which can be seen intuitively also from this figure that there is a uh, discontinuity here. Although here in this case uh, it is not so apparent here, but uh, then we can see that if we approach to this point from the left then it is going to this value here and similarly if we approach to this point like this from here. So, values are approaching along this and it is going to this. So, these left limit and right limit they are same and so limit exists, but it is not equal to the value of the function which is also a condition for continuity here, because f of x 0 is here, f of x 0 is here which is not here here. So, therefore, there is a discontinuity. So, these kind of things should not happen for a continuous function. So, these are the concepts of left limit and right limit and the value of the function they should all be equal. So, then we say that uh, the function is continuous. When discontinuity can occur in uh, many ways, but we will be considering only discontinuous functions of the first kind. So, that uh, here what we have only jump discontinuities like this. So, in this case we have 
left limit and right limit exist and they can have uh, the uh, difference here. So, that difference is called the jump here. At this point, the jump is this from the right we are approaching to this point and from the left we are approaching to this point here. Therefore, there is a jump uh, discontinuity here. So, that is what is called the discontinuity of the first kind. The discontinuity of second kind where the limit does not exist at all, one of the limits left or right does not exist such a thing will be called uh, discontinuity of the second kind. We will not be considering such functions, we will consider only the functions having only uh, discontinuities of the first kind. So, that they have jumps at uh, finitely many points. So, such functions are called piecewise continuous function. So, we have piecewise continuous function So, these are the point, uh, functions like you have uh, left and right limits existing in the interval like this x 1 to x 2. So, here this is the point of discontinuity, this is the point of discontinuity here. So, let us say at a and b in the interval uh, x 1 to x 2, here at this point there is a jump discontinuity and there is here also there is a jump discontinuity of this. So, we can have uh, finitely many in any in any bounded interval like x 1, x 2, there are finitely many points of jump discontinuities. So, there are there are only like in this interval there are only two points here at this point and this at the point A and at the point B there are jump discontinuities here. So, this is a piecewise this is an example of piecewise smooth function. So, in any uh, interval of uh, finite length there should be only finitely many points where the function can have uh, jump discontinuities. So, such, such a function is called uh, piecewise continuous function. Similarly, we will have the piecewise differentiable function So, piecewise differentiable function means here you have the uh, function will be continuous function is continuous on x 1 to x 2 and f prime is piecewise continuous. So, that a prime has only uh, jump discontinuities at finitely many points in the interval x 1 to x 2. So, such a function is called uh, piecewise differentiable if it is uh, if the function is uh, continuous on x 1 to x 2 and a prime has left derivative and right derivative existing at all points and there are only finitely many points where they differ. So, and it will eliminate the uh, case of uh, the points where uh, the left derivative and left right derivative are not equal uh, only 
if the, if they are equal then uh, it will be actually equal to the value of the function so it, there there cannot be a case in this that the left derivative and right derivative are equal but they are not equal to the value of the uh, derivative uh, the value of the derivative at that point so uh, such a case will be avoided in this case because function is continuous and uh, if the left derivative and right derivatives are equal then the derivative at that point will also exist and it will be equal to the value of the function next we will be considering uh, partial differentiation and total differentiation here we consider a function u as a function of several variables u let us say x 1, x 1, x 2, x n. So, for u here uh, this u is from r n to r. or in certain domain which is uh, from in a subset of R n and uh, the values are real uh, numbers here. So, and uh, these x 1, x 2, x n are in turn and this x 1 or x i, x i is function of uh, let us say T 1, T 2, T m. So, then we will be considering this del u over del T i, it will be actually uh, del u over del x j and then del x j over del uh, del t i summation over j equal to 1 to n. So, j is running from 1 to n and uh, this i is running from 1 to m. So, this i equal to 1, 2 to so, these are the partial derivatives here u is a function of several variables x 1, x 2, x n and these x i in turn are functions of some m variables t 1, t 2, t m. Then the partial derivative of u with respect to these variables t i s will be given by this kind of chain rule uh, summation uh, j equal to 1 to n del u over del x j and del x j over del t i and summation over this j going from 1 to n. Now, if the in particular if this x i s are, so in particular if x i s are just function of one variable x i of t only, then we can have, then this derivative will be total derivative like d u by d t and you have this summation del u by del x j and then d x j by d t then j equal to 1 to n. So, this will here then this u itself becomes a function of uh, single variable t and therefore, uh, this partial derivative reduces to ordinary derivative that is known as total derivative here. Although u is a function of several variables x 1, x 2, x n, but these x i s are now in this case function of a single variable t and therefore, uh, u, uh, u is a function of single variable t and uh, we get d u by d t as the total derivative in this case. 
Now, the next one would be differentiation of integral. At several places, we will have the in integrals coming into our picture as functionals and we will uh, be uh, required to differentiate it uh, with respect to its arguments appearing in the integrand. Uh, so, here like i of certain uh, variable t integral x 1 function of t to x 2 of t and f let us say x and t d x. So, this is x is the variable of integration here and this has uh, limits x 1, x 2, but these uh, f as well as these x i's are functions of t. They are continuously or piecewise uh, differentiable functions of t. Then this d i by d t is given by the Leibniz rule it is called that is also denoted in short i prime t which is f at the upper limit you have x 2 t t and then d x 2 by d t minus f at x 1 which is a function of t t d x 1 by d t and then plus integral x 1 t x 2 t and del f by del t of x t d x. So, this is what is called the Leibniz rule, which can be seen by the first principle you i prime t will be actually. See here it can be calculated by this what is i prime t, i prime t is by definition it is limit t tending to or h tending to 0 i t plus h minus i t upon h. So, we can apply this here. So, we will have this i t plus h where t will be replaced by t plus h here x 1 t plus h x 2 t plus h. So, that is what we will have i t plus h will be given by x 1 t plus h to x 2 t plus h f of x t plus h d x and then subtracting here. So, i of t plus h minus i of t will be x 1 t plus h x 2 t plus h f of x t plus h d x minus x 1 t to x 2 t f of x t d x. Then uh, here we will break it into two parts x 1 t plus h to x 1 t and then. So, this first integral can be written as x 1 t plus h to x 1 t and f of x t plus h t x plus x 1 t to x 2 t f of x t plus h. So, this you can take with this minus f of x t d x and plus then you have x 2 t to x 2 t plus h f of x t plus h d x. 
and then dividing by h here. So, we get 1 by h here, 1 by h here, 1 by h. Then uh, letting h tends to 0, we get uh, the first term by this, it, that uh, the second term with the, because this we will write as minus of this thing. The first term we will write it as minus 1 by h x 1 t 2 x 1 t plus h f of x t plus h d x. And this the last one is anyway here as it is x 2 t to x 2 t plus h f of x t plus h d x. And uh, the middle one will be that 1 by h of x 1 t to x 2 t. This 1 by h we will take it inside and then f of x t plus h minus f x t d x. So, 1 by h taking inside and using the continuity or differentiability property of f, we can see that the last term here, this one will be given by, which will give you the partial derivative with respect to t here, like in this, this one and the, this term with the, that minus sign here is the, uh, this limit of this and the first term will be the limit of this. So, we get the, uh, this is what is called the Leibniz rule. Uh, of differentiation of the integral. The next tool will be the integration by parts. Thank you very much for viewing uh, this lecture.